Very pleased to have with us on the program right now, uh, Mr. George Berry. And, George, thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program tonight. Hi, Cam. Uh, thank you for calling. Absolutely. I, I, I'm excellent. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I am indeed. So I ran across this story uh, from the Mail Tribune in Oregon. You, you live in Medford, Oregon, right? Yes, I do. Uh, and and is, this is such a great story. Uh, you Okay, so you decided this summer that you wanted to own... Uh, a particular type of firearm. What can you tell us about it? Yeah, well, I, uh, I, I'm i 71 years old, and I, I think I've always, since a small boy, actually wanted to own a, a Colt 1911, uh, virtually the same kind that, uh, you know, you see in the World War II movies. And yeah. John Wayne always had one, I know that. Uh, so I've always wanted one. Uh, I put 21 years in the military and uh, so on. And uh, Vietnam, I got issued a, a Beretta 9mm, so that didn't work. And uh, I mean, the 9mm worked, but it wasn't the gun I wanted. <laughs> right. So anyway, uh, I finally decided that I, if I wanted one, I should get one now. So I started looking around the internet. Uh, I'm not a high tech person, so I don't usually get too involved in computers or anything. But, okay. Uh, I noticed a. Uh, auction in Pennsylvania, and they had three, three 1911 weapons there on their auction, and I looked at them, and uh, I started my military career in the United States Marine Corps and uh, retired in the United States Navy. So I, I was kind of looking for United States Marine Corps, and uh, it's very seldom you see 1911s actually stamped that way. But I did notice that there was one of the three that actually was stamped United States Marine Corps. So I decided that uh, I would I would give that one a try and see if I couldn't uh, prevail at the auction. Uh which in fact is it turn and and it it had a few knocks against it. One of the things it had against it was the fact that uh, uh besides the sights had been redone and uh the hand the grip had been redone and uh it had been reblued and it didn't have a magazine and and blah blah blah. Anyway, the other thing it had is had somebody else's name uh, engraved or stamped on the side of it, and uh, I decided overall that even with those knocks against it, I'd, I'd give that one a try. Okay. Uh, it was an early model. I think it was manufactured 1914. Oh wow! So uh, I did prevail at the auction. And I had spoke to my uh, cousin out in Florida, Bob Robinson, and uh, who's a real gun guy. Uh, relied on his input a lot. Okay. And uh, he said, you know, okay, it's got a name on it, so what? And that that's a little knock, but it's probably not going to be too much anyway. So it sounds like you made a great deal. You got it for a fair price, and. Uh, in fact, I got it for a really fair price. I, I think everybody else was looking at that and deciding they were going to save their money on that one and, and put it towards the the other two. I know one of them sold for four thousand, the other one for six thousand. Wow! Uh, and I, I paid you know like a thousand. Oh wow! So I I, I was happy. Uh, in fact, I was really happy. I was delirious. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh... And uh, the gun showed up here in Medford, Oregon, and I went down to pick it up, and uh, the name had been mentioned. I, the, the name on the side of the gun, I did have no idea to my embarrassment today that, you know, what this name was or who this person might be. I mean, the gun's nearly 100 years old. It right. could be anybody. So finally somebody said, well, why don't you, you know, use the Internet and try to find out? Maybe, you know, maybe, in fact, it was said that, you know, maybe it's the sheriff of Cochise County or something. That's you know, in that case, it, it wouldn't be a knock against the value. It'd actually add to it. So sure. I uh, looked at the gun, and uh, I, I knew what the name was because it was in the uh, adjective description of the gun uh, for the auction. It said it was John J. McGinty, uh, United States Marine Corps. And I just went ahead and I plugged that into Google and just lit up my my computer screen uh yeah you know i did the same thing a little earlier uh, and uh <laughs> yeah you know it, it's amazing john j mcginty the third 
Yeah. Uh, received the uh, Medal of Honor for uh, his actions uh, in Vietnam uh, yeah. in 1966, correct? Correct. That is correct. Uh, John and I, as it turned out, entered the Marine Corps in almost the same month and year, and uh, we both served uh, in Vietnam. Uh, uh, he retired in 1976. I retired in 1977. Oh, wow. Uh, we had a lot of things in common. Uh, he's 96 days older than I am. <laughs> really? Uh, so he's the old man. I'm the young guy. <laughs> so and anyway, uh, you know, I, I looked at that, but I still, you know, there were a lot of John J. McGinty's when you started looking around, mm -hmm. and I had no idea if the John J. McGinty Medal of Honor recipient uh, was, in fact, the John J. McGinty whose name was on the side of this weapon. Uh, and I started thinking about it, and I thought, gosh, what if it is? Geez, this gun's going to be worth a lot of money. And then that was my first thought. Mm -hmm. And then my second thought was, well, the only way you're going to find out is if you actually can get a hold of John J. McGinty, the Medal of Honor recipient. And he says, yes, that's, that's my gun. Because oh, wow. uh, the other thing I thought was interesting is when you read... John's citation uh, for his Medal of Honor, it actually mentions the pistol. Oh, really? Which, which I thought was, was a rare occurrence. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's right in there. And uh, I thought, wow, that just, that's really something. Then I realized, I think, uh, no, I, I mean, I know, that if, in fact, I can find him, because he was not easy to find, mm -hmm. uh, I kept running against just brick walls, and um, I, I realized that if I did get a hold of him, and if he did say, yes, that's my gun, that I was going to have to give it up. And so how did you actually find him, George? Well, uh, it's really strange. I went all through the Internet myself, which I'm not very good at, and couldn't find him. I mean, I, I found his name and I found the, the information behind him, but you could never find, you know, a, an address, a phone number, an email, or anything like that on him. Uh, in fact, the Internet said that he lived in California, and I uh, couldn't find anything. I finally contacted uh, Congressman Walden uh, from Oregon mm -hmm. and talked to his military liaison uh, officer and uh, asked for their help. Uh, they said they thought they could locate him. I waited uh, three, four days, went by, and still nothing. So I finally decided, well, I'll give it one more shot. And I uh, went to one of those services on the Internet that you pay them, and they say they can, they can get this information for you. So I paid them for what they had, and they said, well, we have a John J. McGinty, uh, in South Carolina. Yeah. So at first mm. I thought, well, okay, that's that's probably not the John J. McGinty. Uh, it's just a John J. McGinty. Mm -hmm. So I uh, decided the next morning I, I would go ahead and just call the number that they had anyway. And then I looked closer at the information that I had gotten off the Internet from this service, and it dawned on me that the address uh, that they were listing, Buford, South Carolina, was the same town that John J. McGinty, the third United States Marine Corps, enlisted in originally. And I said, oh, now that's a coincidence that is probably more than just a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I called him the next morning and... Uh, Sure enough, John answers the phone, and then he's got this deep, gravelly voice and just said, John, and I had to try and introduce myself. And I, I'm sure these guys get all kinds of phone calls. Sure. And, and so on, and they're suspicious of everything. I, I certainly appreciate all of that. Uh, so I said, John, I, look, I, I'm not selling anything, and I don't need anything from you. I'd just like to ask you a couple of questions. And, and he said, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and I said, um, John, first of all, did you own a Colt Model 1911? 
And what did he say? Oh, there was just, I mean, there was silence on the other end of the phone. There was just crickets. And the first thing he said was, you mean 01038891? And, of course, uh, <laughs> that was the serial number on the side of this, this weapon. Oh, wow. And I said, well, John, obviously, I don't have to ask you the second <laughs> question and John I've got your gun that's incredible and so uh, what, what was what was his response well his response <laughs> actually I almost don't want to tell this part of the story it's uh, he might be embarrassed I don't know all right well you know he, what? If, he if, sort if... of went into a tirade about how the gun had been stolen and the FBI knows about it and the FBI he's got the FBI's name and da 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 I said, wait a minute, John, John, wait a minute, wait a minute. First of all, I'm going to have this gun on its way to you tomorrow morning, period. Uh, you, you can count on that. And, so, and, 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 that, and that gun, George, is now back uh, in the hands he, of he Mr. McGinty? It. Right. He had it three days later. Wow. And as I understand it, there's a... Uh, there's a pretty cool postscript to this story as well. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Um, John asked me if I'd get my receipts together. He'd, he'd write me a check for whatever the cost of, you know, that I incurred in obtaining the, the weapon. And uh, I announced to him that I, I really didn't want his money, and I, I really wanted a 1911. That's why I bought that one. I didn't buy it because his name was on it. I bought it in spite of the fact his name was on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I asked him, I said, John, do you own a 1911? And as it turned out, he owned two of them. And I said, well, I, well, you know, I'd sure love to have one. Maybe we could just trade or something. Um, and so he had one that was kind of a, Morphodite, just a thrown together thing, and didn't sound very good to me at all. And I hated to say, you know, hey, look, I don't really want that one, right? Because <laughs> he had another one that really sounded great, and uh, he told me, he said, I don't know if I want to get rid of that one, and and I didn't know too much about it at that time. Yeah. So I I went the next day. I sent him sent him his gun, and uh, when he had his gun, he called me and said, I've got it. And then it's when he said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and send you this gun, this other 1911. And come to find out, <clears throat> excuse me. Sure. Come to find out that uh, the model 1911 that he actually wound up sending to me belonged to uh, John William Finn, uh, Chief Ordnanceman, United States Navy, who was himself uh, a Medal of Honor recipient for action during the attack on Pearl Harbor. Oh, wow. Oh, that is, that is just incredible. And he procured the weapon from John Finn. I, I guess they had become uh, close friends or I don't know exactly how close, but I, I think fairly close listening to parts of the stories. Uh, and he wound up trading uh, Finn uh, two of his guns for this one Model 1911 that Finn had uh, in his possession yeah. that he procured uh, right after the attack. That is incredible. Mr. Barry, I, I could talk to you for another hour, but unfortunately we have about 45 seconds left in tonight's broadcast. I can't thank you enough, sir, for coming on the program and sharing your story. Uh, best of luck to you. I know that you and your wife are uh, planning on visiting Mr. McGinty later this year, and I hope that you will give him our best as well. And thank him, uh, and thank you, sir, for uh, your service to this country. It has been a real honor getting a chance to talk with you tonight, and I'm so glad that you could join us this evening.